So today we are talking about basically funnel stuff. So we're talking about like finding and spotting and stopping leaks in your funnel. So when I say leaks in your funnel, let's just get clear on what that is, but let's even take it two steps back and get clear on what a funnel is. Cause Jen and I always feel like people get this, um, confused. So maybe Jen, you explain that this part. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So I think sometimes when, and Lacey and I talk about this a lot, like when people hear funnel, they automatically go to like that, like bro marketing thing that all of us are trying to avoid where it's, it has to look a certain way. And it means there's order bumps and OTOs and expirations and some, 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 sometimes some like icky marketing tactics. And that is not what we mean by funnel. Like when we are talking about a funnel, we are truly talking about your process from, from funneling people from being a lead to being a customer. And so that might look, it will look different in every business, right? For if you're a coach, your, your funnel might look like, um, having someone fill out a discovery call form to booking a call with you to getting a link to be invited to your one-on-one coaching package to actually checking out, right? Like that is a sales funnel just as much as something with a sales page and a checkout and an order bump and those things are a sales funnel. So it's truly just the process um, of converting people, taking people from being a lead down a funnel and funnel them into being a customer. Um, Lace, anything you'd add to that? No, I think that's perfect. And I think like we could also interchangeably call that like a sales process or yes. like some value centered sales. I talk about starting getting and keeping the sale. Like you could even think about that in that way. I mean, probably not the keeping part, but you get me like, it's just like, how does someone move through your process? And so mm-hmm. that's really what we're talking about. And that's what we want to like track. So it doesn't like, I also think sometimes when people hear funnel, they just think it means email sequence and it doesn't just mean that either. So anyway, just to like clarify all that. Yes. So when we're talking about a whole process, the reason why you want to figure out where it's leaking, which we just mean is like where people are falling off, right? Where like yep. you're like, it's dripping off, um, is because that's really the only way to fix it. And I think what most people do, and this is why we want to talk about this is because what most people do is when they're not getting the sales they want, they think that's so black or white and they make these huge changes because of it. Right. It's like, yeah, I'm either getting the sales or I'm not. And if I am, it's all working. And if I'm not, it's all broken. And that's not true. Like if you are, you maybe could be getting more sales if you were actually spotting your leaks. And if you're not getting sales, it doesn't mean the whole thing's broken. Like usually it means one part of your process is where most of the things are dropping, right? Yep. And that is impacting the rest of it. I've done this so much. I have never, ever seen it ever. Literally in the entire time I've been doing this, Jen, I'm curious if you would say the same where it's like, I don't know, your whole thing is fucked and none of it works. Like I've never, ever seen that. (laughs) Absolutely not. But everybody seems to think that. But everybody thinks that. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. And this is not like, I want to be clear that when we say everyone and Lacey and I like talk about these things all the time. Like this could be someone brand new to business. That's like everything, or this could be someone making multiple seven figures. Like this is not a problem isolated to stage of business or experience. Like this is a universal thing. And we're like, guys, you can know this. You can know this. (laughs) We can show you. (laughs) Yes. And it's so important because it's also how you take your power back in your business. Because if not, you're just running around like doing whatever you think someone on the internet said. Like, it's like, you're not getting enough sales. So you're like, oh, this person's saying that like, it's because like, I don't have great copy. So let me read you all my copy, but you have absolutely nothing that suggests that copy is the issue or, you know, insert whatever thing for copy. Um, And it's how people I think end up drowning in their business because they've completely overinvested in the wrong things to solve well, the, the wrong problem, but they don't even know what the problem is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's just so, so time consuming. So that's why being able to know one, what is your funnel? Like, can you actually map that? Jen, what do you, what do you map ours in? I actually, I mean, the last place I mapped it in was, uh, I just did it in a Google doc. Like I think people think it needs to be fancy. I had started to use like draw.io or you know one right. of these, like, visual tools or a lot of times I'll use Google presentations but in the last one I did I think I drew it like just because I like the boxes in um 
Google presentations or draw.io. And then I literally just screen captured it and put it inside a Google doc because I feel like that's easier to work with to like yeah. keep all the notes and have all the info. And I, I also think that's like, we could do a whole other live on that as a best practice, because I feel like it makes everything else immensely easier. Like documenting your funnel. Yes. And when you have like the right documentation coupled with the right tracking, it's like a whole, maybe we need to make this like a bonus thing because it, it's like a whole new level is unlocked and it just saves so much time and energy. Yeah, totally. Like you would be so surprised how much you can get wrong if you don't have it documented. Like Jen and I know this stuff really well, you guys. And we even had, I can't even remember what it's about, but we both like were on different pages on something and it yeah. seemed so obvious to both of us. Like it was like, of course it's this. And Jen was like, well, no, of course it's this. And we just like, were on the same page there. And we would have had like a pretty broken funnel because I would have been writing and marketing to one thing where Jen set it up for something else. And so just to say, like having it documented is so important. Like we can think about what, you know, how we want to share that, but have that first to start. Like, I know it seems so simple. Um, Michelle said, I'm assuming these funnels can be as simple as like finds on IG books, recall client. Kind of, yes, but there's more to that, like that I would write out and go through, like finds on IG, clicks on these links. Where do these links take them? Where do those links take them? How do they get to the free call? From the free call, do they hit a thank you page? Do they have, um, what's it called? An application or a questionnaire? Do that, like, it's like, yes, that's the funnel. And also there's so much more in that. Jen, I'm sure you have something to say about that. <laughs> do. And I'm trying to see, cause Susie, um, when we did a dashboard for Susie, she said that we could share her funnel mm. like as an example. Yeah, yeah. So I could even show how I like literally map it out. If you're yeah. that really quick, I don't know if you need to let me share. Oh, I'm probably. Sure. Yeah. Hold on. Let me do that. Um, mm -hmm. just cause I think sometimes seeing an actual visual is, um, really, really helpful. So let me know. All right, cool. Okay. I have it. I'll, I'll keep talking while you do. <laughs> no, it, it's letting me open it right now. Um, all right. So I'm going to make this bigger. And um, this is something, and this is just Google presentations. So in Google Drive, Google Docs, like your suite, you can do this. I made it a little fancier because I added screenshots of the pages because I'm always extra, but you can just use a gray box, right? But basically, here's an example of a funnel. This is for a product, like a digital course. Um, but basically someone hits the sales page, um, they view the sales page from there, they click on a checkout page. And so she has three different pricing options. Um, so she has three different pages, right? With us, like we have one checkout that has different options in it. Your cart tools are different. So our funnels are going to be different. Um, and then each of those has their own thank you page. Now, if you were, we can even like make up, make one really quick. If you were, um, a, a coach, for example, you might have like a, um, I wouldn't even count like your main website as part of the funnel, unless you really know yeah. people are going through that. But it's like using that example that you just mentioned, it's like, okay, if, if the sales coming from IG, like, where are you sending them? Oh, I'm sending them to my coaching overview page, right? Cool. When they're on that page, what can they do? Well, they can read the page and leave. Okay. That's the end of the funnel. Or maybe they click to like fill out the form. So they go to the form page. And then what do they do from there? Okay, well, after they get, they get a thank you page that has them book a time to meet with me, right? So it's like, thank you plus calendar booking. And then once they complete that, it's like they get a confirmation page. That would be your funnel to start with, right? That, that you know, isn't your full because obviously then you're gonna have the phone call, you're gonna have, you know, the link, but do you see how I'm starting to shape it out? So it's not necessarily about where they're coming from because this this same path would be the same whether you're sending people from instagram from TikTok, from you know you're walking going door to door ringing on doorbells like it's the same path that everyone would experience regardless of where they came from that's what we're talking about here is trying to get clear on this piece first all that other stuff is easy to add on once you're really clear on this yes totally okay shantae said i think what stumps me here is how this applies to one-on-one -on -one applications so similar to michelle's question so maybe pull that back up for one sec jen and oh yeah yeah sorry yep so like where it says like calendar booking maybe that would say application or something but you would still be able to like 
track who's landing on your application page, which would actually be so helpful because I have a client who we do this and it's like, we knew a ton of traffic was landing on her application page, but most people weren't finishing the application. That was a massive leak in her funnel. And so actually being able to track that was really, really helpful because we were able to go, what's wrong with the application? Like, are we making it too complicated? Can they not fill it out quick enough? Can, um, you know, are they getting stuck on a, a certain element? Like, is the tech not working? Like we were able to like really drill down to all of that. <laughs> um, sorry, I just read Belinda's comment. She said, she's following us that the perplexing thing is how you can type so fast, Jen. <laughs> I'm a freak. Like, I'm just going to yeah. own that, that. Like everything I do is a little bit extra. So it's so extra. Yeah. I think <laughs> I just built out the funnel though, for an application. Like, and I, again, there's a lot of assumptions here because every application is different. Right. But because you all do things differently, which is wonderful, but also makes it hard to give examples. But in this one, this is one that I've been part of. Like there's a kind of a coaching, like a, a program or coaching overview page, right? From there, they go to the application form, they complete the application, they see a thank you page. Then your team is processing the applications. You're Maybe you're having a call, you're deciding who you want to work with, who you don't. They get an acceptance email. The acceptance email links to the offer page. That's where it goes into all those details about the program and or offers them to check out, right? You might have one, you might go direct to check out at that point, you might have a sales page. Once they purchase, it's purchase confirmation. So this is showing the full funnel from the time that they see the original thing before they even apply, all the way down to where you've captured the dollars. Yeah, so helpful. So yeah, it, like exactly, Shantae. Like, so you need to figure out how to measure how many people go to the application page as part of it, for sure. So then to fix that leak, let's say they're going there, we'd fix that. Yeah, like, so if you're like, well, a bunch of people go there, but like, I'm not getting... They're not getting the thank you page, right? Like I maybe have a hundred people land on my application form and I got two applications or something. Okay, what's happening here? Where, what can we fix, right? Because if you're spending a shitload of time and energy getting them to that page and all of your marketing is going to get them to that page, but then they're not, you know, moving from there, that like that breaks your entire funnel. Like everything after application breaks, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. Not that all of those are wrong. I just, like, you're never even getting to them. Like, it doesn't matter is the point, right? Exactly. And you'll see people fix things at the end when the problem's at the beginning. You'll see people, like, your acceptance email, for example, and I know this is all made up, right? But maybe you have a good amount of people viewing your page. A good amount of people are applying. You're accepting people. You're like, nobody's joining. The problem must be, like, my coaching overview page. And well, no, the problem actually could just yeah. be, like, your acceptance email. And is it the copy in the email? Is it the subject line? Is it the click-through? Is it like that the email's going to spam. I don't know, but like you can see how stressful that would be when you're coming up with all these things and you're like, now I have to fix 49 problems when like really there's probably just one little thing that you need to tweak or adjust to get this whole thing moving more smoothly. Um, or at least you're tackling each step, right? You're like, okay, I'm getting a lot of people to my overview page now, awesome. Okay, let's look at the applications, not getting a lot of applications. What's going on there? Let's tweak that, cool. Now you've got part one and part two working really well. All right, let's move to the next part. And it just feels so much more manageable than being like, I have this complicated seven step funnel and I have no idea what's breaking down. And so now I've got to redo the whole thing or like go back to corporate, um, which for me would be fun, but for you probably isn't because I'm a weirdo. Totally. Don't, don't threaten Jen with a good time. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So Shantae said, right. They're not completing following through. So helpful. So no new freebie, just fix the current funnel. Exactly. But I think something Jen just said is so important that I really want to like latch on to for a second. Oh, yay. She said, this makes looking at data so fun. And that makes me so happy. That makes Jen so happy. So happy. Okay. So with this, that Jen just had what she even said, like, let's use the example that Jen used. We're like, okay, what's actually happening is from acceptance email is when they're falling off. Like there are so many minute pieces of data within that. Like Jen said, are they opening the email? Are they clicking the links in the email? Are they even getting to the offer page? And what's important to say about that is like, this is why data matters. Because if you brought that to a coach, like what are they going to do with that unless they can drill down into this? They're just making their best guess too, probably based on what happened to other clients in the past. And I'm not saying they don't have like good 
insight based on evidence they've seen. But what if you have a totally different service? What if you have a totally different audience? What if they mostly have coach coaches and Shante has done for you services? Like, right. You know what I mean? It's like, it gets so crunchy and we're just guessing on things that are knowable. And that's, what's really important. Yes. And even like the example you gave before, which like for the life of me, I don't remember what it was, but I remember that scenario distinctly. Cause I remember us texting and I'm like, Oh, but I thought you were like, no, but I thought yes. even stuff like that. Right. Like that can yes. happen with coaches. People use different language for things. Yes. I've heard coaches, um, and not even like one-on-one coaches, I'm talking just like maybe like more guru in the space kind of people talking about conversion rates. And it's like, well, what conversion rate are you talking about? Are you talking like top to bottom funnel? Or are you talking checkout to um, like purchase? Because those are two very different numbers, right? 4% at the bottom of your funnel is not great. 4% top to bottom funnel is awesome. So like, what are we talking about? Are we using the same language? And what do you mean by that um, can make a massive difference? Again, you could be the world's best coach, but if you... And your client are using different language to talk about the same things. Like you're not going to get the same, you're not going to be on the same page. Yeah, totally. And you're not going to be able to drill down into that. Yeah. Elisa said, hi, having my dinner with you. Okay. I grabbed a question. Um, I think Lucy asked it, correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, she said, is there, is there such a thing as too many funnels? Um, Yes and no, like, right? Like, yes, in the sense that if it's really hard, in my opinion, it's really hard to perfect a lot of funnels at once. Like, I I think most people would be shocked at how much you can perfect a single funnel and how much work and effort and iteration that takes. Like, that's why a lot of people with the, like the, that, that live under the theory of take one offer, scale it to a million is because you like, you could iterate the same funnel for a long fucking time. Yeah. Um, we have, <coughs> we have one funnel at Datable. Oh my God. Sorry. I'm like choking. No, you're good. We, we, we do have one, we have one. Yep. And like, I, I have within my brain, 5,000 improvements that we could do to it over time without even branching off from there, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. And we keep a list because we're like, we don't want to over tinker because we want to get our results and make sure that we're looking at our data to make changes. So here's our ongoing list of things we can do. And I think like with the multiple funnel question, I think it is, it's not wrong, but it's easier. Like it's easier if you start with like a core funnel. And I would say if you have a bunch of funnels, which most of us do, because you're coming into online business or you've been in it for a while, things add up, things pile up. You're in different programs that suggest you might want to try different things, whatever. Nothing is wrong with any of that. But I think it's really hard to optimize and improve and focus on multiple funnels, right? It's like, if you're trying to learn like three new skills all at once, like it would be really hard to manage that and actually move the needle on any of those things versus like, okay, Right now I'm going to learn how to crochet and I'll save these other random hobbies for like another month. That actually allows you to use the time you have to focus on that. So I would say if you're listening and you have multiple funnels and you're like, oh, great. Now I'm feeling really funnel overwhelmed because I don't even know which one to measure. It's like either pick the first funnel that your client, that most of your clients see when they interact with you or pick like the direction that you really want your business to go. Like if you're really wanting to take on more one-on-one clients or sell more coaching programs or sell more whatever, like pick one, focus on that. And then once you get that to a place that you feel good about it, then you can move on to another and just kind of do maintenance checks on that one. Lisa, would you agree? Or or if you disagree, obviously I'm fine with that too. No, a (laughs) hundred percent. Like I, anytime, literally anytime, which happens a lot, someone says to me, funnels just don't work for me. My funnel doesn't work. I'm like, how long have you tried one funnel? And they're like, well, like two months. I'm like, get the bug out of here. Yeah. Like try one, get it working really well. And then you can apply that to all your others. It doesn't mean like take them down or don't have them up. It just means in terms of like energy, focus, effort, like put it into your top priority and really study it. Um, Yeah. I just think like, this is what a lot of people don't talk about, but like, I, I know for sure, because I have clients that are doing this. I have friends that are doing this. I have mastermind, um, you know, counterparts that are doing this where it's like, 
they're like, yeah, I've spent all this energy like on getting this one thing right, you know? Yeah. And what's also fascinating when you have data about your funnel, like you can be surprised in the strangest ways. So one thing that we did, and I didn't tell you, I was going to mention this, but I don't think you'll care is we have, um, like a main lead magnet, which is our metrics generator. That's like, if you go to our website, that's the thing that pops up. And we're also starting, we've just recently released a webinar. And so we haven't actually talked about yet if we're ever going to switch over like the other, whatever, right? Like, and we kind of didn't really fully release the webinar. We sort of just told people on our list, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, same, yeah, yeah, exactly. So like we're, we're testing some things, right? But yeah. one of the things that like all of our thank you pages didn't actually link to measure and maximize. Like they were just like, if you opted into something random, it was just like, thanks, check your inbox, right? Um, and we made that one change. And this month when we looked at our September report, like there was a ton of traffic that came from thank you pages. And we were like, what? Like a like, lot I, more yeah. than you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I messaged, I messaged Lacey when I saw it. I'm like, this is fascinating to me. Like, this is something that like we had, like we just, I had to redo a thank you page for something. And so I was like, oh, let me just like add this on the bottom. Lacey, tell me what to say. And, and she wrote it and we put it on there. And like, it's been driving traffic. Um, and I would have just assumed when someone opts in, they wouldn't do that. Right. I didn't want it to be like a tripwire kind of thing. We, we don't, we like feel strongly about how we, we market this particular business. And so we, you know, have made some decisions that maybe mean we make less money, but we're doing it in a way that we feel good about it. Um, and so I honestly didn't think that was going to do much, but it was kind of like a, why not? I'm in here anyway, let's just do this. And it's actually driving more people to our funnel, which is like, like, blowing my mind a little bit. It's, it is always like the small shit. I just did a client lesson on this too. Cause I had a client that did this, like we made a few small tweaks to this blog post thing. And it's like, makes a big difference. Like, right. Um, so yeah, uh, but these are like the level of detail you kind of have to get into at a certain point. Um, and it's why doing it for one versus all is a little bit quicker and you're going to see faster, better results that way. Yeah. Um, Lucy said, if you were trying to streamline funnels, for example, I post on social podcasts, email lists, all lead to one-on-ones. Would it be streamlined to the same website link? For example, application to calendar, or would these all be separate funnels? No, that would all be one funnel in my mind. Mm. Yeah, one funnel. The only exception I make for like multiple funnels for the same product would be Facebook ads. Sometimes yeah. people like to just duplicate their whole funnel that way because Facebook ad tracking can be a little bit more complicated than any other traffic source. And so if there's only one way someone can get to that funnel and it's through Facebook ads, it's pretty easy to measure the success of your Facebook ads, right? So that's the only exception to that. Otherwise, like, yeah, it should all be the same because you shouldn't have a different funnel by source. The sources of traffic are feeding the funnel. Um, and so it's much easier if you just have one and then use UTM tracking, which is what we mentioned earlier, to then discern, okay, of this traffic coming through, how, which of them came from Facebook? And if they're from Facebook, what, where on Facebook, right? Was it from a group? If so, which group, which post in which group, right? Then you can also start to compare your funnel performance and say, wow, when people come from Instagram and they move through my funnel, like our conversion weights are way higher than if they come from Facebook or TikTok or YouTube or whatever, um, or email, right? And like, you can actually compare the different traffic sources and see which source is actually getting you more conversions. I see this a ton, especially with professional bloggers, um, which I know is kind of very niche thing, but like, I've seen so many where they're like, oh no, like Facebook, and this, none of this is to say one source of traffic is better than another. The point is they're different. Like you may blow up from Pinterest and someone else may be like, Pinterest is ghost town for me. Like I post on there and I get nothing. Like, but I see it a lot with bloggers where they're like, we've always done this one thing. And so this is what bloggers do to be successful. And then you look at the data and you're like, yeah, you're getting some traffic from there, but actually like this whole, this, this other platform is giving you all of this traffic that's actually converting and you're not paying attention to it. Um, or maybe that's not your top source of sales. This is always like the big one. Like your top source of traffic is usually not your top source of sales, um, which is always surprising to people as well. Yes. Uh, Lucy said, wow, many mind blown. All of the outlets are just feeding the funnel. Exactly. Like when we're talking separate funnels, we literally mean like I have 12 different opt-ins and they lead to 12 different email sequences and 12 different um, order bumps and, you know, programs and like that 
kind of thing. Um, which like for some people, that's the right move for their business at the right time, but it's usually yeah. built up over time. It's not all at once. Right. So, um, yeah, but like traffic is not like funnel. That's just like, what's dropping people in the funnel. Yeah. We usually think about it like a you would have like one funnel for each product or service, right? So if you're a, let's, I'm, I don't know, Lucy, your business, but like if you're a coach, for example, okay. So you might have like your one-on-one -on -one service that might be its own funnel. You might have like, or let's say Seth Lacey's business, right? A lit up life. Like she's got her one-on-one -on -one coaching, like that's its own funnel. You apply, yeah. you have a discovery call, whatever, right? You've got the value-based sales, like mini, what, I don't know what you call that, but like the mini program, right? It's like a yeah, couple values of sales. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that's its own funnel. Um, this is obviously not counting dateable, right? Like if she has, um, digital products, you could buy or purchase, like each of those are their own funnel. Yeah. Um, that's at least the way I think about it is like the offer or the service. Each one has its own respective funnel because it would be kind of confusing if you sent everybody to like, even if it was like, here's my page of all the things I offer. Each of those usually has like a section for each offer with a link to their own kind of path. Right. So yeah. that's typically how I think about it to like make it a little bit more simpler. And also to go off that example, which I think is important to say, like I do have some small digital products and I don't track, like, I don't even look at those funnels. And I think that's important to say too, because sometimes I think when we think about data, we think, oh God, every single thing I have, I'd have to study all of it. And it's like, I don't care. Like, that's not where I'm trying to make a lot of money in my business. That's not where I get results in my business. Like I have one like thing where it's like, people go to the wait list and that's what I look at. And that's what I care about. Um, so just to say that too, like you're allowed to have a funnel that you don't track, you probably won't get great results from it if you're not willing to track and iterate and all of that. But like, that's allowed to be a thing in your business too. Like coming from someone who believes in data, sells data, loves data, looks at data every day. Like I think some people, once they hear about it, they're like, oh, I'm not allowed to like have a funnel I'm not tracking. And it's like, that's not true either. Track your most important one, put all your effort into there. And that's, what's going to grow your business, you know? Yeah. And like, yeah. We, and we talk about this all the time inside measure and maximize too. Cause it's like, just because you're not looking at the data doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Right. Like Lacey says she, she says she's not tracking it because she doesn't have like a dashboard for it. And she's not looking at daily. Yes. That's what I mean. It. Exactly. But like the data is collecting in the background. If all of a sudden 100%. tomorrow, Lacey decides like, oh, I want to go optimize my, you know, digital download of X. She can do that. And that's yes. where the power comes from. It's like, yes. you don't have, like, we have all kinds of dashboard pages that get, and I'm adding new ones all the time. Like Lacey's probably sees them and is like, what is this girl tracking? Right? Like I add them constantly. I rarely look at them, but it's like, if I have a question and I want to know like, which of our blog posts is sending the most people to the program, I know I can grab that information. Doesn't mean I need to look at it every day. Like we have a nurture sequence, like our main kind of all of our, you know, different ways people can get on our email list all lead to the same main sequence, right? We don't look at that daily. Like we get that report daily. We don't look at it daily. Actually, we were just talking about it last week. Like, oh, we should actually dig into that and see how that's doing and where we need to make adjustments, right? Yeah. So I think people feel overwhelmed by it, but the truth is I actually feel like you get so much more power from it because it's like, I feel like I can make the main thing, the main thing. And I don't have to worry about everything else because when I need to worry about it, I'll have the information I need to make that the main thing. Like, and to me, okay. it's like, so it, like, I just feel so much like more relaxed and less overwhelmed because of that. It's so funny that you say that. Cause I was talking to someone recently who like, it's very important for her to like run her business from like a very feminine place. And she's like, kind of like, oh, I've like never seen the value in data. I run really from like a very feminine and space. Like, I don't love the idea of like watching every number. And what I said to her is like, it's funny because I actually feel like having data has allowed me to run my business from more of a feminine perspective than I ever have, because it's like this thing lives over here and is collecting information for me. And it's like doing the job so that when I have a question, I can go to it and consult it, but I'm not the one trying to like hold all that information all the time. I'm like something in my business has the job of like holding all of our information. And when I want to go there and look at it, I can go. It's like, I have like a genius in my business. <laughs> doing all this work, collecting all this information. And when I have a question, I can just go ask them the question and they will have the answer. And so I think it really does like make it 
such a different experience. So I totally agree with you. But did you just answer Sean K's question? I did. Yeah. So she just said in the chat that, um, I think I get it. The funnel is an email funnel. The traffic can be multiple ways onto that single email funnel. And I just said that emails can be part of the funnel, but I want you to elevate that even like one step yeah. further, which is like, before they even can get emails, like, how did you get their email address? Right? Like, and yeah, so for some people, did they go know, to a page, a thank you page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like for some people, emails can be part of it. You can have an entire funnel without any emails too. Mm -hmm. It's more about like, from wherever you're sending people, where did they land to see an offer? And then how did they move through to either purchase or give you their email address or make an appointment or, you know, apply for something or, you know, whatever that looks like for you. Um, and if you want to drop, like, if you have a website, you want to drop into the chat, I'm happy to like pull it up really quick and, and explain what I see of how, like, what of your things I consider funnels. Um, happy to do that. If that helps make the connection for you as well. Something else important to say there is like, not everyone's gonna land, go through your whole funnel or land yeah. in the same way. So that's where it can get confusing too, but it's still the same funnel. So like, as an example, like someone could land on your offer page from social media. So they never opt in. They never like social media was a traffic source that sent them kind of far down your funnel all the way to the offer. But maybe you have like a whole email sequence in front of it that they didn't get. That's still them entering your funnel. Mm -hmm. They yeah. don't like have to enter through the email sequence, although it's part of the funnel. Does that make sense? Yeah. And actually I just, Shantae, I just clicked on your um, Facebook profile and then went to your URL. And so the main, first of all, nice job with your UTMs there. Um, and second, I would just say like your um, Elevate Partnership, for example, like that to me is a funnel. Like that is a thing that you're offering. I clicked from your Facebook to this. This is me entering your funnel, right? I'm viewing the page. If I were to click on it, I'm not going to click around because I get distracted easy. But like, if I were to click on a next step like that, those are the steps of your funnel. So yes, emails may end up being part of that funnel from you to get them to lead to sale. But I would say like, this is step one and you did a great job with your UTM. The only thing I would add there is I would add in like term is profile because now you're going to see that someone came from Facebook and it was organic Facebook. Like, again, you crushed the UTM piece. The only gap in your UTM there is that you won't know that I came from your personal profile. Um, so that's just like the one piece of bonus feedback I'd give you. Um, uh, Shante said you're a rock star. That was so kind. Thank you. And she said she has too many funnels. <laughs> yeah. I do think that sometimes that's what people realize. Like, even when we all just like at Datable, like even when we started, like we kind of started with like a broader vision of like more funnels. And then we kind of had this like come to Jesus moment of like, fuck it, scrap it all, like one funnel, one thing. And I feel like our business has gotten so much better since we doubled down on that. Like not just even in terms of like sales, but I mean, in terms of like our experience of running it. <laughs> yes. And it's yeah. like, we're able to prioritize things and also like we could be more strategic in our marketing efforts now. Like I feel like in the beginning we were all over, we're like, we're going to do this and we're going to do this and we're going to do this. And now it's like, cool, we've got our funnel built. That was like Q3's goal, right? We crushed it. And so now it's going to be about testing different marketing strategies and optimizing the funnel. And we're doing one at a time, um, which again, this is both of our like kind of side thing. So uh, just honoring the fact that not everybody has, can take quite as much time as like perhaps we are doing it this way but it's giving us so much more freedom because we're like, cool, here's like, we know what we need to focus on. We do the thing, we measure the results. We tweak the thing, we measure the results. Like once we feel good about it, we move to the next thing, right? Like we have another thing that we're gonna be starting really soon that we're both really excited about. And it's like, we have been putting that off because we wanted to make sure that when we could do it, we could do it and that we were going yeah. to make that the thing, right? And so- um, Yeah, and if this thing is gonna, speaking of funnel leaks, if this, thing, whoa, what we were doing, what the thing is, is more of like a marketing thing. Yep. And so initially we were kind of pushing forward on that. And then we were like, no, our fucking funnel is not like where it needs to be to go drop more leads into it. So we don't want to spend all of our time building leads if we do not have a converting funnel. So this is another yes. way I would say that I think is really, oh, wow that I think is really important <laughs> um, is I just like pinched myself so hard and didn't mean to is um, do, do you just have like a leads problem or a conversion problem? Like even if that's the one thing you're figuring out in your funnel, 
that makes a big difference. And so what I mean by that is like, if let's just make up some numbers. If you want to get 10 sales this month, do you have, you know, a hundred to 200 people or more really, right? Coming through as a lead. If not, you have a leads problem. Don't even look at conversions. Like you do not have enough leads to hit your goal, right? Or if conversely, you want to make 10 sales and you have 500 people coming through and you're not making sales, don't go get more leads. You have a conversion problem, right? And so what we basically came to the conclusion of is like, we don't have a leads problem. We have a conversion problem. We need to perfect the funnel. And so that's what we spent our time doing. Now we can go get more leads because we know our funnel is converting really well. Yeah. And it's just going to be easy as shit. Where it's so hard for people is when they're trying to fix a conversion problem with more leads or a leads problem with more conversions. And they are doing this the whole time, right? Mm. And that's not to say it wasn't scary. Like neither of us feed our families from dateable, right? Like that is not our main thing, but it was still really scary. Like when Lise was like, whoa, we're going down this path and I think we need to pause and not do these big marketing campaigns that we've been thinking about and working on and paying people to do, right? Like we're going to pause on this and wait six months before we do it because we've got to perfect the funnel. It was scary for all of us, like for team, (laughs) for Lacey, for me, like we were all like, oh my goodness, what does that mean? And like, that's, that's probably going to take, have us take an income hit here, right? Like there's going to be, but now, like she's saying, like we've spent so much time working on this funnel and it's doing really well. And now I'm like even more like excited and supercharged for these marketing things. And I'm so glad that we waited because now it's like, we're, we're going to get way more out of those than we would have if we had just been like throwing leads at something that wasn't really optimized and working. Yeah. And not only would we have a bad situation there, but then to re-engage those leads later is so much fucking harder. And so yeah. it's like, you're working for free at that point, you know, cause you're like getting leads that you're not convert. It's just a mess. <laughs> Shante said, this is my come to Jesus moment. In a good way. <laughs> good. Um, but yeah, so this is why just knowing those things, again, even if you don't want to drill down into the minutia yet, know if you have a leads problem or know if you have a conversion problem that will save you so much time and energy and then get the right help for that. Cause again, like your coach can only help you to the level at which you bring them information. So if you can go to your coach and be like, I have a leads problem, I need help. Great. I have a conversion problem. I need help. If, if they're trying to help you solve a leads problem with conversions, you both are going to just be like swimming in the soup together and frustrated as shit. So um, like Jen said, it doesn't have to take as long as it's taken us. We both, you know, have this very much as like our side thing and our client and customer service comes first. So like our funnel comes second, but even if it took you two months or whatever, like, yeah, two months doesn't feel like, or it does feel like a long time. But if it's two months to then actually be solving the right problem in your business for the next year, I promise you, you're going to feel like a different human. <laughs> like it's going to be so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, do you have previous lives around leads issues or converting issues? I don't think so. I can add one. I'll do I don't one. I think so. That would be a fun series though. Leads versus conversion. Okay. I'm writing that down. But really like to, to just like summarize that quickly, or maybe Jen, you could do the nerd translation for us on that. Um, but it's like more of a numbers game than anything else. It's like, what number do you want to hit? And do you have enough coming in to get that? But Jen, I'll let you say more of that. Yeah. And I mean, I want to be careful in how I do that because I, my nerdness can sometimes overwhelm people, but um, just cause I, again, I'm an extremist. Like I take everything yeah. way too far. It's, it's like a problem, um, in yes. every aspect of my life. Um, but I will say like the, the things that you can tweak can have massive results. Right. And so you could spend your time trying to get way more leads with a small conversion rate. And, and that, that could be fine for you. Like you might be fine going down that path. However, if you want to convert more of the leads you already have, then that's where you would want to focus, right? And it's like, let's make, that's what where Lacey and I were going. We're like, we're actually fine with the number of people that are hitting our sales page and are coming into our world and opting in. Like, we just think that more of these people are not understanding. It's like, we just believe so deeply in data that it's like one of those things where like, if like, it's like, I feel like I went back in time and I have like a winning lottery ticket and I'm like, no, 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 like, like you need exactly this, right? And, so, and you're like, why won't anyone listen? Like, yeah. 
Exactly. So it's like, that's like what we were like, no, we really need to do a better job making that clear on our sales page. And that's where our focus needs to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it is a little like intimidating when you start to reverse engineer. Like when I meet with someone that wants to start a business, like in corporate, people always think it's fascinating that I run online an online business or online businesses. And so they'll be like, oh, how do I do this? And so I'm like, okay, well, if it's, you know, if a funnel converts at 4%, like how many people does that mean you need to reach to sell this amount? And your product is this amount. How much does that mean you need to sell? And then people like, sometimes it's even scarier when you reverse engineer the step before that. And you're like, okay, well, if a hundred people need to see my sales page and an average email open rate is 20% and a click-through rate is then 20% of that, you're like, oh, so I'm going to have five people view my sales page. I can't have 10 people buy, right? Like the math is not mathing. So yeah. I just want to say though, like as frustrating that as that is, it's so empowering too, because yeah. I will do this math with clients like all the time and be like, you're not, not getting sales because you suck. It's because math, it's literally math. The math just doesn't work here. And they're always like that blows. And I'm so relieved because it felt like I was just like, could not like find the thing I was missing. And it's like, well, the thing you're just missing is you need more leads because math, right? (laughs) And it's actually, it can be fun too. Like I will tell you, you're like, I have measure maximized before Datable. So Lacey came in, we reworked the entire program. So like it is essentially a new business, but it did exist years ago. Mm -hmm. And I launched it in 2020 or 2021, the program originally. And I had like 70 people and I'm going to get very like transparent here. I had like 70 people on the wait list because I was like, no one wants to learn this. Like I'm nerdy. I'm weird. Like this is a unique gen thing. People don't care. And my friends were like, no, people care. Lacey was like, people care. Just, you know, try to sell it. So I had built the sales page and I sent it to my 70 person, you know, waiting list. And in like the first three days, there was like 33 sales. And I was like, this math does not make sense. Right? Like 70 people, I should have like one sale. Like there should have been like one, right? Like, and it was probably going to be like my friend. So I was like, how are there this many people? And even Lacey was like, I mean, I love you, but like, that's more than we were expecting. Like, I wonder what's going on. And so of course we dug into the data and somebody that was on that 70 person list had shared it in this Facebook group of like, operators, right? Like OBMs and OBMs love this kind of stuff. And so a bunch of them had purchased from there. Cause then when I'm digging, I'm like, some of these people that bought aren't even on my email list. Like how did they find this program when I only emailed these 70 people? And that was actually super empowering too, because then we were like, damn, let's get in front of more OBMs, right? Like let's, let's find where these people are. And so that was really what started the program was a lot of it about service providers. And then Lacey kept being like, no, I feel like everybody needs, like, this is not just like a service provider thing. This is like an all business owner thing. And we just also started to notice that more and more business owners were signing up instead of service providers. And so like the rest is history, but, um, oh my God, I just saw the comment. She'd say you're cracking me up right now. She didn't even know she needed this conversation. Yeah. Oh God. (laughs) Anyway, the math would be exciting too, was my, my point in that story. Like, it's not always this like, oh, it's also not statistics, which like, I don't really know what that means, but like, it's not crazy formulas. It's not crazy math. Like chat GPT can tell you exactly what you need to calculate. Like this is not something, you know, I'm not a math person at all. You would make fun of my like math abilities, but I can calculate these funnel numbers. Yeah. It's just really for the sense of like gut checking yourself. Like I think like so much of the online space is like, just set the goal and then the people will come. And it's like, it does not work like that. Like you could have whatever goal you want, but like, if you don't have a funnel that's matching that, then you need to fix your funnel or change your goal. Like it's kind of that simple, like, you know, (laughs) like, and, and when it's simple is when it's empowering, because if not, it feels like, oh my God, it could be 5,000 things. What am I doing wrong? What am I missing? And it's like, you have to fix your funnel or goal. And there's really clear ways to fix your funnel or you can adjust your goal, right? It's kind of that simple. Yep. Yeah. So good. Okay. I just realized what time it was. We have to wrap because I know you have a call to you, Jen, but um, thank you for being here. I love you. Thanks I'm for so having me. For I love you, you too. This is I like my favorite, favorite group to be in. Like every time, but 
I, I'm like, I get like 10 out of 10 happy when Jen and I do these because I just feel like if everyone could hear Jen talk about data, everyone would love data because like her like passion and, and brilliance for it is so, so clear. So thank you for being here. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you guys all for being here. Michelle said this was the motivation she needed to go ahead and pull some data. Yay. Yay. Amazing. All right, guys, I hope you have a beautiful week. Um, we'll pick someone for tag your traffic tomorrow. Jen and I will be back with UTM stuff and I love you all. Bye guys. Bye.